I got gotcha. you. Ready, ready to go. You got a pen? No. You ready? Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're doing well on a Saturday. My name is Ryan Coleman with Hometown Realty. My lovely co-host is back with me in the saddle, April Coleman. You got it. Hey, it was lonely <laughs> last week. I'm telling you. It's hard doing this thing by yourself. So. It's Tennessee weather. It was. Yeah. She had some allergies that were bothering her. Mm. Weren't you doing some uh, martial art training over oh. the weekend? She, well, learning how to woman up and do some self-defense. She said, woman up. <laughs> now I have Tough bruises up. all over my feet. <laughs> so, I, so before we get into the show, I was able to leave an appointment, and I was able to come back and kind of see what's going on. And uh, went in there, and they were doing self-defense, and it was a big old room. There was a lot of, a lot of women there. Mm -hmm. It was. Maybe 25 or 30. And I kind of peeked in there and just kind of keeping my eye on it and see what she's doing. Trying to get a picture of her. Mm -hmm. Kind of posted on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. And I kept getting the eye. They said, oh, you can come in here. And I was looking, and I had my glasses on. <laughs> and, and I was watching, and the women keep looking at me. I said, well, let me just stay back. Well, April comes over and uh, hands me her wedding ring. I guess she had it on, didn't get it taken off. She's like, take the glasses off. You're you looking like a creep. Right You're like a creeper over there. I was like, oh lord. They were ready to take him out. And and then then I, then I watched I watched how they were chopping and hitting and I was like, I don't want any part of this. So so he left. So I left <laughs> before they got woman up on me. I, I, I didn't want them to take it out on me. So uh, yes, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. It was good training. I think that's something. Obviously. Before we get into the show, we know, you know, being in the real estate industry and sales, you just never know who you're going to meet, and we've heard all the crazy articles and things like that, so it's just important for women to uh, take care of themselves and know the basic mm -hmm. training and things like that. It's good for men as well. Right. But uh, good to have been over the weekend, so glad you guys are joining us here on News Talk, Real Estate with Ryan. We're always going to keep you up to date with the information here in your backyard, East Tennessee, and we've got a good show for you, and we're talking about investment properties. Mm -hmm. Investment properties, what you need to know, whether you own some now, maybe you think about purchasing some more, we're just going to talk about that, things that maybe you don't think about, things that you need to know, and hopefully some helpful information here on News Talk that will bring you the most information that you need to know. Exactly. But it's good stuff, you know, there's things we were, me and April were chatting about um, that you just don't think, you know, it doesn't go bad till it goes bad. Mm -hmm. You know, investment all sounds like I'm investing in real estate. I'm investing, I've got multiple properties, which is good, and it's a solid investment, I believe 100% you know, behind our product. But there's things you need to know, and it, investing is not for everybody. You don't want to be surprised. You don't want to be surprised, and you just never know who you're dealing with. And mm -hmm. so, some important things that if you're going to have investment property, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. You know, there's a Landlord-Tenant Act that you have to follow. Yes. Uh, some things to watch out for, and we're going to talk about that. So, where are we going to start, April? Well, I think that um, you probably need to know just some general basic things that um, you should know as a landlord. So I believe that the first thing would be that you just need to maintain a safe environment, obviously, for your tenants. I mean, some people just kind of want to be a landlord, sit back, not really do anything, bring in the income, but that's not what it's about. What is you that know? called? Is that slumlord? Slumlord. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a slumlord. No, 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 no. We want to be a good landlord that takes care of your tenants, but also can reap the benefits. And I think 
most people really don't look at the long-term benefit of that. If you're right. going to be investing in real estate and if you're going to have grown properties, what makes sense, it all comes down to having good people and good tenants there. Yes, you definitely have. And you don't want the turnover. Turnover is going to you know, affect you dramatically. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when the tenant leaves, you got to go back and repaint and redo things. You want a happy tenant. Right. You really do because, you know, if you're not if you're not being a good landlord, then they're just going to leave and then you're going to have a high turnover. You want people to stay there for a long time. But on the landlord's defense, there's a difference between changing your own light bulb and going out there and <laughs> changing yeah, your light bulb. light bulb. Don't call me for a <laughs> light bulb. Don't call me for a light bulb. It's a whole light bulb that needs to be changed. Right. That's not your responsibility. Right. But things like that. I mean, you think about it. If we can, you know, the whole article is going to really talk about different topics, but more specifically, it's having a great tenant in the property. Yes. You know, having a great tenant, uh, taking care of them. It all starts with your screening. Uh, but when you've got a great tenant that's paying and taking care of the property, um, you want to do as much as you can to keep them because you don't want to, you know, you never know who you're going to get next. Right. So, right. so keep a safe environment. Um, make sure you do your due diligence on all tenants with a criminal background check and um, make sure that they don't have a criminal, you know, record. I think that you, there's sort of, different kinds of criminal records you have to look at the Tennessee law that you know you can't discriminate against but um, just make sure that you're going to keep it safe even vicious breeds of dogs make sure you know um, because you don't want to have that risk of your tenant, other tenants being bitten by another tenant's dogs and um, what do you do April it, it, you know mm -hmm. this is my residence and we just rented it out we don't have a bunch of rental property but uh, maybe the market's not where we need to be um, I want to hold it just for a couple of years. I'm not going to be a long-term landlord, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not that savvy. I'm not that computer savvy. Uh, what can I do uh, to rent it out for a couple of years so when hopefully the market turns a little bit and I can pay down equity and be in a position where I can sell it? What do you mean, what can you do? What can I do? You know, I mean, I, obviously, I'm not that tech savvy. Oh, yeah. you know, I mean, there's all. Are you talking about collecting rent? And well, 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 it's a whole. It, it's a whole process. I mean, do I? Um, how do I go about checking criminal records? How do I go about you know the oh, appropriate well, forms and things like that? that I mean, we if need? you're not tech savvy, then you can hire a property management company, mm -hmm. and they but, can do it all for you. But what about the fees involved? Oh yeah, there are fees. But you have to look at your cash flow. Do you have enough cash flow coming in to pay the property manager to take care of it for you? Or, you know, is there an individual that um, you can hire to help you? Is a husband and wife that needs to work together? Sure. You know, you just have to think of who are your res who are your resources to help you. Now, are we controlled? I mean, let's say if I'm a tenant and um, or a landlord and I'm renting, um, am I capped on how much I can rent it for? No. Okay. You can rent it for how Tennessee law says you can rent it for however much. So whatever the market's willing to pay, mm -hmm. if the market's able to do that, what's, what's a good way, you know, uh, it's the first property I've got to kind of gauge to see what rental values are doing. I mean, do we, how do we compare? I mean, I know home values, there's a lot of opportunities there, but what would you think that I need to do with, um, to see what market rents? Because that's very tricky. Right. I mean, I think you need to look at other properties in the area to see what they're bringing for. Kind of a comparison mm -hmm. approach. And you do a comparison approach in your area because, you know, what you get down in Farragut, West Knoxville area, you know, $1,000 plus a month mm -hmm. may not be what you're going to get, you know, down in East Knoxville. How far would you, how far would you expand out? I don't know. I mean, I think you just need to stay in your area. I mean, I wouldn't expand too far out. Within a mile, mile or two. Yeah, I mean, maybe within five miles. I mean, it just depends on, I mean, you know, if you know the area, you know, and then also we have a lot of out-of-state um, buyers as well. They just need to be able to rely on their agent to do the research for them and to, you know, help them with that aspect. With the, you know, a lot of those out-of-state buyers, are maybe they're and they're going to lease something for, you know, a short period of time, mm -hmm. and that's where that opportunity comes in as, as well. Right, right, exactly. So, um, with those, with that being said, um, going back to keeping a safe environment and the things that you need to do, and maintain a quiet environment is another one because um, you just need to make sure everybody's respectful of others. You can even have it in your lease, like quiet time is at 10 p.m., no loud music or noise or anything like that. Um, 
it is your responsibility as a landlord to keep a clean environment so you need to be able to provide some type of dumpster um, and if you have trash cans in the hallway you need to have someone responsible for cleaning up those trash cans and keeping that all clean um, and then there's also environmental hazards that you need to make sure that your tenants are safe from so one of those things are carbon monoxide detectors mm -hmm. make sure you have that and then also it is required if I don't know how many units you have to have but um, like a fire alarm system to make sure that if there is a fire that everybody can be you know notified by the sirens and evacuate properly let's talk before we get into the environmental hazards and things that we need to, to talk about probably more in detail you know like your lead-based paint and things like that i think one of the biggest thing is that it just because you get a rental property does not mean that you're going to get 100 percent occupancy there could be a vacancy right mm -hmm. there may be times where you've got to cover that mortgage so you've got to have those funds allocated to to cover those and a lot of people don't understand that in that period of time so that is very important yes Definitely. Having your, you know, a little bit of cash flow makes it easy. So when you have those vacancies, we can recap. We'll talk about that more. We're coming up on a hard break. We're talking about having the bad tenants. How do we get rid of the bad tenants? What do we need to do? More about expenses, and then as April was talking about, a little more of the environmental concerns, lead-based paint, all those different fun things that you have to know. Being a landlord. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Stay tuned. Real estate with Ryan. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Thank you. Gotcha. We'll pick it up. So do you wanna do you wanna get into the um, the bad tenants and how to come out or do you wanna go back and eat okay? Yeah. You guys watching this live streaming here on Facebook appreciate you watching us we're taping the show for Saturday but thank you for tuning in get a sneak peek kind of how we put the show together hope you guys had a great weekend what school start April? next school Wednesday Wednesday Knox County kids going back to school it's that time already and the balls are a couple weeks out so it's that time in East Tennessee, guys. So, appreciate you joining us. Make sure you like our page, share our page. If you guys are out there, try to keep you up to date with all the information. Thank you for following us. Hey guys, thank you for staying with us as we were talking on the other side of the break. Uh, we were talking about uh, a couple things, but April wanted to lead that off with environmental hazards and things that, you know, uh, we need to talk about. We we're talking about carbon monoxide, and there's some important things before we run out of time, so we want to make sure we cover the most important things here. So we're talking about carbon monoxide and why that's a silent killer and yes. how it can be, you know, can't be detected by sight or smell, yet the high levels of presence can kill in minutes. And so, for, so important that you have those carbon monoxide mm -hmm. detectors. Yes. Liability for the landlord, 100%. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Um, it is. And then also, we were talking about your smoke alarms, of course. Um, and then lead-based paint. Um, so if you have a unit that or a home prior to 1978. So important are your lead-based paint, the EPA, our government. 
if you don't have that form, if you don't have that pamphlet, if you don't have something showing that you've informed them about lead-based paint, mm -hmm. there's big fines, big penalties, right. and uh, you want to avoid that. So make sure your leases are covered, your paperwork, anything built prior to 1978. It does not matter if you painted the walls. It does not matter um, if there is no lead-based paint. There's right. a possibility of that hazard. Guys, we do that in purchases as well. You've just got to inform that there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Tenants have the right to do an inspection on it. They can do a test on it. Uh, but you got to give them that right. If you don't put it in your paperwork, it will be a big issues coming down the road. Yes, so that's a must. A you must. So that make sure you do that. Next one. Asbestos. Asbestos. Now, it's usually in another building, uh, usually older building, because it can cause serious health concerns. Um, obviously, if you have asbestos, um, you just need to make sure that you know we've got to hire a company to clean it up properly right, right. and um, it's best that you check with your laws in your state obviously regarding the landlord tenant act and what you need to do and uh, there is some funds and some opportunities out there to clean that up mm -hmm. um, state and localities that will help with that mold mold yes if you our friend mold <laughs> lord either mold hopefully it's mildew <laughs> fungi fungus yeah. fungus uh, but you know, whatever kind of fungus it is, um, very, very important. As a landlord, you mm -hmm. must understand that there's nothing to play with. Health concerns, again, if it gets in the wrong hands, gets in the wrong lawyer's hands, it could become a real nightmare. Exactly. And usually what happens on mold, we find all the time, it's small things. It's that water leak that was just deferred and you haven't stayed on top of it. Mm -hmm. And what was a small problem, whether it's gutters or proper water flow away from the crawl space, you've neglected it and now it's turned into what was a you know, $150 problem, now it's a $5,000 problem mm. or yes. more. And so then if it gets to a point where it's that, you've got to hire in the professionals, they've got to remediate it properly, mm. remove it, and you can talk thousands and thousands of dollars that you got to take care of. Exactly. So do it right, remember it's not your house, you've got tenants and you've got to make sure their safety as April was talking about is first and foremost. Exactly. Another thing is radon. We're big in radon in this area. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you just want to make sure that um, you know you have it tested to make sure there's only radon in the home. And then if so, then you need to, or in the unit or whatever, then you need to remediate that and make sure that it's expelled out. And now, then, now do, you, do you recommend testing every home that you have prior, or does it just depends if you know about it? or? I would say probably if you just know about it. Yep. Now, obviously, if you're buying a property, that's something that you may, when we talk about our inspections, some of our tests that you do, it is important to know if you have to do something like that. Right, or if that area is just kind of an area that's um, high and right on, then definitely do that. Um, and then I would say the last one would be, um, which is very common around here, especially around the outskirts, but um, meth produ production, you need to make sure if um, there is hope nothing has been produced inside your unit but um, any kind of hazardous drug materials or anything like that um, I think meth is probably a landlord's worst nightmare and um, it can be very costly to clean up so that's another one you need to know if you're purchasing um, if you're purchasing something then has meth been exposed in that unit or that's why you do criminal background checks on your tenants you know, and then also, um, Lord, I can hear him now. So, oh, yeah. rental property for me, that's no, okay. I'm gonna sell it. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> hey, we're gonna sell it. Hey, that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, so that's another thing you need to do I inspections mean, on your properties. Um, well, I think you know, listen, we'll, we'll tie back into the tenant and, and getting the tenant where we started at the beginning part of the show. Understanding that putting the right tenant in there is everything, getting somebody that you're doing your checks on the front end. Make sure you do your criminal background. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of sites out there you can go online that you can do free checks. Um, if you don't know, hire property management. They have all that access. You don't have to fool with it. Yes, there is a little cost of income of doing that, but the liability is so much less greater. Now you pass that liability to the property management. They're taking care of that. They're going to guide you and walk you through the stress. It's probably well worth it, the management fee that you're going to pay. Right. If exactly. you're not adapted to handle all that on your own. Exactly. Um, getting the right tenant in there, just because when it goes bad, it really can go bad. 
-hmm. and most people don't really understand that. Some of the things that we're talking about, they never come up until it goes bad. And that's where we say, you know, even if you've got a rental, you wouldn't even think about it. Um, nice little community, nice little quiet town, if you're not checking on your property, mm -hmm. not doing periodic inspections. Right. These kind of things could happen. Mm -hmm. And you need to know your laws about um, inspections as well because you can't just go in up on a tenant and open the door and say, hey, I'm here to do my inspection. I mean, you got to give them proper notice and you can only enter the property if it's an emergency, that kind of thing. So, laws. You need to know your laws and, and make sure you know what April, what do we do? We get, a, we get somebody in there bad. They're not paying their rent. They're not paying at all. They're causing problems. They're causing mm -hmm. ruckus. What do we do to get them out? Is that a challenging process? I mean, do we, is this going to cost thousands of dollars? No, I mean, I think that it can be a challenging process, but um, under state, Tennessee state law, you, you know, under your lease agreement, you have to specify when the lease is due and when it will be late, which you typically give them, I think, five days. So the first day, the second day, the third day, the fifth day. Um, and then after that, they have a total of 14 days to pay their rent. And then after that period, if they do not pay, then you can start, you can give them a notice and then start the eviction process. But I think that it is probably a little bit more difficult because some people will give a hard time trying to get out, you know, sure. even if they're, you know, but you just can't let it keep going on and on if they are late and they tell you up front hey i'm going to be late i'm sorry let me pay the late fee whatever but if it just starts into the second month and they're late again then know that that's a trigger that you need to start you need to go ahead and start the process because you just can't let it go on for months and months and months i'm a big believer of going with your gut and you know everybody falls on hard times and things happen in life right things right. happen um, so there's an advantage of owning a property by yourself and managing it and having that interaction with the uh, tenants mm -hmm. and seeing what their scenario is, what their track record is, and, and working on that one-on-one -on -one versus the property management. You may not know, you know who's in there. So there's some advantages. What I would tell you is, you know, it's case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if there's reasons behind it, work with them. Because obviously, you know, they could be a great tenant. Things happen. Right. But like April said, if it's a habitual process, you just can't allow that to go on every month. Yes. Now, what about a security deposit? Now, typically, do we, on our leases, do you recommend putting a secure deposit on? It's actually, um, yes, and I think that it's 10%. You can't go beyond 10% of what the, over the rental, um, of what your, you know, rental income monthly is. But, yes, it is actually, um, if you do a security deposit, it's actually... A state law that you hold it into a escrow type account mm -hmm. um, and you have to specify the account where it's being held and um, it has to be an account on its own and then you have to notify the tenant in your lease or say if you're buying the property and they already have a lease then you need to notify them like now your deposit is being held in such and such bank um, you know that kind of thing. So it's law that you have to do that, but so it's not. It's, it, have to. It, keep in mind, it's not your money; it's their money. You're holding that, and right. that um, usually when a tenant does leave, you're going to need to refund that as soon as you do the walkthrough. Yes. So I wanted to end this kind of on the note: Who would make a good landlord? And I think anybody that's enjoying managing real estate properties, love doing small improvements to the property and projects. You have some time, maybe retired. Um, you don't mind the occasional dealing with difficult situations. Mm -hmm. um, you've got liquid assets to invest now, and it's more of a long term. And uh, one important thing: don't give out your home phone number, cell phone number, or address. Yeah, send it to a PO box, make it neutral, and all that. Hope you've enjoyed the show, Real Estate with Ryan, talking about investing in real estate property. What you need to know if you're going to be a landlord. Thank you for listening to us every Saturday here on News Talk 98.7 at 5 o'clock. We'll be back next weekend. You know if you need us, the number 693-SOLD or RyanColeman.org. You guys have a great weekend. Thank you. Okay, we're ended here. Well, guys, hope you're having a great Monday. Thank you for tuning in to us, Real Estate with Ryan. We talked about landlords, tenants, evictions.
things you need to watch out for. We'll have a post on our site, ryancoleman.org. We'll have a lot of things that we didn't even cover. We covered most of it, the highlights. I appreciate you guys watching us. Uh, anybody that's buying or selling real estate, we're going into the fall months. We know that's important. Market's changing. There's not a better time in East Tennessee to sell. We are really busy as we crank up the last part of the year, so keep that in mind. If you need any evaluations, you need any tips, you want me and April to walk through and kind of just give you some ideas of what we need to do, even if it's not this year, but we're planning for next year, be glad to do that. Again, as always, guys, we appreciate you watching us. Thanks for the support and hope to talk to you next week. Thank you.